there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you with a slightly different twist from the things that I've been doing lately. So you probably realize I've had a couple of these Grands Furs Brook axe and hatchet videos that I've put out over the past couple of weeks, you know, trying to make a comparison of a couple of these different tools and using them um, both in conjunction with an uh, axe versus hatchet and axe versus knife just to see how things stack up but I wanted to take a minute and actually take a quick look at some of the craftsmanship across three of these small forest axes to see how quality the craftsmanship is from axe to axe to axe so that um, you know it gives you a better understanding of the overall precision and total quality craftsmanship that you get when you buy a Grants Furs Brook axe. Now keep in mind that these are basically handmade. I mean, there are tools and machines that are used, but it's not like these are built on an assembly line with uh, you know automated process and automated machines. I mean, this takes literally a person's touch and intuition to build these and to craft them from uh, just original pieces of metal and they just smash them into shape and then fine tune them and grind them and polish them. It's just an incredible amount of craftsmanship that goes into this. So uh, keep that in mind as you look at this. And there's some excellent, excellent video footage and uh, documentaries, I'd say, on the Grands Furs Brook uh, factory. And so I strongly suggest you check it out and maybe um, that'll give you a, a better understanding of kind of what I'm describing here. Now one of the things I'd like to point out is that each one of these small forest axes comes with a book and in the book it shows the name of the person whose maker mark is stamped directly onto the axe head that you purchase and so these small forest axes come with AS which I'll butcher this name but uh, seems to be Anders Stromstead and so if you think about what this guy's doing, you know, this guy comes to work every single day and pretty much works on these same axes over and over and over again. So I ask myself, you know, how does the guy do? How consistent is he? What is it? What do you get, you know, when you look from axe head to axe head to axe head? Now, I'm not positive on the actual finished product and how the head gets fitted to the handles. I'm assuming that's somebody different. And then also with the sheaths, I'm assuming that's somebody different. So I'm pretty much today just going to focus on the axe heads and give you a comparison of these three so you can see how they all stack up together. Now on this one, you can see a very nicely pronounced AS with the Grands Fursbrook logo stamped in very precisely. This one's a little bit off. It's not perfect, but it's close. And this one's kind of similar to the second. So in that regard, you know, there's a little bit of a difference here. That was probably a good solid strike. I'm not exactly sure how they stamped that in there, but it's probably a, uh, you know, a manual process that the guy's using some sort of a, um, I don't know if he'd call it a die, and he you know, smashes it with a hammer and sets it in there. That's what I'd assume. I have uh, no true knowledge of that, but I'm just assuming. And so, uh, you know, slight variation there. Nothing that's significant, but just something to note. And on the opposite side, Grants for his brook. Grants for his brook. And surprise, Grants for his brook. So, these are all uh, very similarly stamped. Not too much difference. If you look at how these are pressed onto the handle, it's actually remarkably similar from axe to axe to axe. I mean, just the little details where, you know, you can see this little relief right there, little relief, and then the sort of flat spot with the little, you know, dimple right there and just all that detail that you see. And it's so precise from copy to copy. Same thing, you know, the relief and the dimple and just how that whole thing is fitted up. 
This one's just a tiny bit different. Looks like a little smash mark there, but you know, again, you get that relief all the way through the flat spot and that little dimple. So pretty cool. I mean, again, this is basically done by hand, you know, touch, a little bit of feel, a little bit of equipment, but at the same time, it takes that blacksmith and his touch to get that thing exactly where he wants it. Now, if you look at this butt end here, I mean, it's very square. Has some mildly rounded off corners. I'm sure that's for aesthetics and durability. And also you don't want really sharp edges on the parts of the ax that aren't supposed to be sharp. So that's the first one. Very similar on the second, but you can see this top corner is rounded out just a little bit more. So in this case, you can see it on that top left corner. It's just rounded out a tiny little bit. And on this third one, pretty well square. Same thing, just a little bit rounded out on that top left corner there. But very nice straight lines, very even, uniform. It's beautiful. When you look at the overall finish, it's extremely similar from copy to copy. Nice horizontal lines. It's not exactly like a brush finish, but uh, has that pretty cool rustic look, that's for sure. Now on the business end here, there's some ever so slight differences. I mean, it's subtle, but you can see it. For example, this particular head looks like it's just slightly longer in length, maybe an eighth of an inch than this one. You end up with some really sharp angles on the top and the bottom, whereas this one's slightly rounded out. Now I'm sure that's not gonna affect performance, but you know what I'm doing here. I'm just coming up with a comparison to show how there are slight variations in these axes due to them being handmade. Now I just swapped the one on the right out for the third axe to give you the comparison. And here too you can see this particular axe head has a significantly longer blade than this one. I mean, between an eighth and a quarter. And obviously this one here is all rounded out where this is sharper angles. So, I mean, subtle differences, nothing that's, you know, significant or, you know, it's certainly uh, not going to take away from the overall quality and, and sharpness and, you know, usability of this. But like I said, you know what I'm doing. I'm just comparing them and showing you the differences from head to head. Now, this isn't the easiest thing for me to show you or compare, but I'll do my best. I'm just trying to get a little look at the top profile. You know, maybe it looks like the one on the left is a little bit pointier. And that's actually the one that had the slightly longer blade length and uh, sharper corners. And the two on the right are the ones that were slightly rounded out. But extremely consistent. I mean, look at the thickness of that blade across all of them. I mean, really consistent in the thickness and the taper. The length is uh, misleading because I don't have these perfectly lined up. And just another subtle detail, if you look at these metal wedges, you'll see that two of them are opposed one way and the third in the middle is the opposite. So I'm sure that's something that, uh, you know, is taken into consideration when the wedges are driven in on how they're gonna hold this whole thing together the best way. And, uh, you know, just a subtle little detail. Here's a quick look at the handles and the branding on the handles. You 
You might notice that this particular brand is the strongest. It's the most complete. And also this particular handle has a much tighter grain pattern. Take a quick look at that. Check out how tight that grain is. Really nice strong brand. This grain's not quite as tight and the brand is not 100% complete. And same with this. You can really see the difference in the grain between the handle on top and the handle below. These are two separate copies. So the handle on top to me has a much denser grain. Now I'm not sure if that's going to really translate into any long term strength but it is certainly a difference worth noting. And I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick this up but there is an ever so slight variation in the dye color of the sheath. You'll notice this one's a little, a little maybe more reddish brown and this is a little more orangey brown. And then the third one is uh, you know, very similar to the first. Uh, just a little bit more of that reddish color but um, you know there is an ever so slight variation in the leather sheaths. But the overall size, construction, buttons and quality are all consistent and very nice. All right, so there you have it. A side by side by side comparison of three beautiful Gransfors Brook small forest axes. I hope you like what you saw. Hope you found it informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate your support, and I really hope you come back soon. As always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.